A sudden storm, pelting rain, peals of thunder. But inside the halls of power, a different kind of tempest. Is Robert? That gust you feel, that's the chief of staff to the president of the United States blowing by. In this White House, so proud of its zen-like calm under pressure, the exception is Rahm Emanuel, a force of nature unto himself. Hey guys. As White House chiefs of staff go, we can safely report he is the only one to have lost most of a finger to an Arby's meat slicer in a high school summer job, to have trained as a ballet dancer, to have been a civilian volunteer with the Israeli Defense Forces. It's been affectionately said the chief of staff and his two brothers constitute a Jewish mother's dream come true. His brother Zeke, the doctor, advises the president on health care reform. His brother Ari is the inspiration for the character Ari Gold on HBO's Entourage, said to be among the president's favorite TV shows. There better be a Scud missile heading towards Beverly Hills, Eric. Rahm Emanuel is apparently channeling all that family energy into an all-consuming job that, by all accounts, he never really wanted. What do you got? A seasoned veteran of the political wars of the last two decades. Hey, Rahm. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. He is at age 49 on his second White House tour. Are we doing uh, the briefing now? Emanuel worked in the Clinton administration where he was known as the enforcer. And this time he's in charge of almost everything that moves in the West Wing every day. And that day starts early at 7.03 a.m. Hey guys, how are you? Right. He attends the vast majority of the president's meetings. Have a seat, everybody. From young staffers to the more seasoned, Rahm Emanuel inspires hard work, loyalty, and it's widely reported fear. David Axelrod is a longtime friend and the president's closest advisor. Yeah. He's been the ramrod that's gotten things done here time and time and time again. You know, I like you, but I can't wait till you leave. Bye bye. And time and time again on this day, he treats us with the same warmth and affection usually reserved for his closer colleagues. All right, you guys can go now. I'm going to read. Come on. Come on. Come on. Occasionally, there are flashes of humor. Too funny, man. I can't get my kids to do that. Squirt, squirt, squirt. <laughs> I, I don't bullshit. I hate all of you. Yet most of the time, Emmanuel moves from office to office, taking command, ordering action. We should be, I'm going to talk to Pete about getting over all over this kind of FAA thing. At one point, wanting the FAA to follow up on airline safety. We get the deputy. I want to know what's going on and see what we, what we should be on top of. When he's not on the move, he holds court in his expansive office down the hall from the Oval Office. It's the command center of political strategy as the administration simultaneously deals with big crises and launches ambitious policy plans like health care reform. What you guys do with Ron? Is he? He is. And even the Secretary of the Treasury has to wait his turn. Secretary Geithner had to try again later. So I want to talk, I want to, talk to him for a few minutes before that. As we waited for our chance to talk, I found it was tough to tear him away from his Blackberry. What's it like to hear your uh, Supreme Court nominee called a racist? Was it, I just, I find it. I, well, first of all, I mean, uh, let me quote the Republican senator uh, from Texas who thought that uh, both Rush Limbaugh and Newt Gingrich's comments were ridiculous, and I think that uh, states it. How is this White House different from your last go around? <laughs> Why do you laugh? Well, I mean, it's, well, first of all, every president's different. And the presidents define their presidency, but they all, the times also define their presidency. Somebody uh -huh. said to me, all the intelligence of Bill Clinton and more mental discipline. Is that accurate? There, look, um, I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to do that. They're to totally different presidencies at different times. So Yet knows, in all of uh, his success president. in this corner well, office, said, there said, is a palpable sense of melancholy. Reminders of his wife, Amy, and their three children who haven't yet been able to move to Washington. And his move back to the West Wing meant a jump off the fast track. If all had gone according to plan in Rahm Emanuel's life, he would now be comfortably settled into his fourth term in Congress. He was reelected the night his fellow Chicagoan won the presidency, the night that changed everything for his family and deferred a dream he kept close to his heart. We now learn through a New Yorker interview 
that you had really hoped to become the first Jewish Speaker of the House in U.S. history. Mm -hmm. Must have been a powerful thing to get you off of that track and put you here in, in, a, in a place where you've been there, done that. You'd worked here already. Check. Yeah, that is correct. Congress allowed me to stay involved in the public sector and be the type of parent I want to be. Hey, the one thing on this weekly radio, Bruce. Yeah. Yet Rahm Emanuel still chose to put his personal ambitions and personal life on hold, a decision his closest friend in the White House knows he weighed heavily. I mean, it was really an act of love for the country that he thought, maybe I can make a difference over here and help this new young president uh, succeed, and he has. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going out of Rahm's office. It's that kind of relationship. When we come back, what happens when the leader of the free world decides he wants a burger? Two fries. You know. And it's halfway across town. All right. Are you concerned about the economy?